All right, this is going to be a little exploration of Bitwarden, showing you all the features and just the journal of, of the plugin itself, so you get an idea how it works. It is a plugin at the top right. Uh, if you have an account on that website, like I do here at Big Lots, it will give you a number. The number represents how many accounts it's found inside your vault. I only have one, so it's only showing one. Clicking it will bring up the tab. The tab is just whatever relates to this page you're on right now. Uh, it lists all the logins you have. For me, it's just one. So right there, if you click it, it will auto-fill. There's a password and username area. It will fill that in. And underneath that, there's identities too. Identities are where you can uh, use, just click a button, it'll fill in your name, uh, uh, email, phone number, address. If it's already, if you fill that in, link down below in the description for link how to set up identity. Then at each item, you have uh, the view button. You get a copy uh, username and copy password. You literally just click it. You can view the item itself. You can click the eye to expose the password. Next to the eye is a check mark. That is for checking if the password has been inside any, any breaches. It uses the Have I Been Pwned database. It does securely. It never sends your password ever, so it's very secure to do. And at the very far right is a clipboard. That is your copy button. And several other items have that. And then at the website, it's basically there's that little square box with the arrow out. That is to go to the actual website itself. Then at the bottom of that, you have your notes section. And they kind of hide it. There's a password history, which is pretty helpful. Just click it, and it shows you all your passwords you use in the past for that particular item. Close button at the top left. And the edit button, if you need to edit it's at the top right, it'll close that out. Uh, it's the same idea for identities. You've got the view button right next to it. And you can view it, you can also edit it. I'll close that out. And next to that, at the tab at the bottom is My Vault. Clicking that shows you everything that's inside your encrypted vault. Keep in mind, everything that's inside your vault is encrypted with your master password. So do not forget your master password. Write it down and keep it in the safe if you need to. I highly recommend that. But it shows you your favorites at the top. And then you have your different types. And then if you had a folder options to show you all your folders, then everything that's not a folder. Right now, I don't use folders for this particular account, but it's underneath no folders. Clicking underneath types at the login will show you all your login accounts. Clicking it again will bring up the uh, view you've seen before where you can edit and close it. You can also click the button to jump into that account. You can also copy the username and copy the password. You can also search for it. By just typing and if you need to there's a at the right there's a plus button if you need to add a new login so we'll go back you have the card section this is where you can store your credit cards just like the identities you can store credit cards so it will fill in the credit card number for you and all the other data associated with it so you don't have to so you don't have to worry about fat fingering or misspelling or mistyping you can let the machine do it for you you can press the add item or at the very top right there's a plus button to add a credit card pretty helpful feature and you already seen the identity but you can have multiple identities this is just for filling in forms this is not a contact or address book don't use it for that uh, this is in case you maybe you put your wife in there if you have to ever fill out maybe she has a different address or what I have you doesn't matter this is where you fill out if you def keeps you from having to type out a bunch of stuff um, so we'll go back from there and you got secure notes. This is just a catch all big uh, area just to put stuff in. You can name it whatever you want and put it in a folder and just type in whatever you or whatever you want into there and it's all encrypted. So it's a great place to put security questions or secret family recipes or or one example I've had is my cell phone keeps going out of the network connection and there's a code you have to enter to reset network connections and always forget that code. It's a helpful little place to put it. Um, also a great thing is putting serial numbers for products you have, uh, warranty expiration dates, warranty call numbers, and uh, the sky's the limits. So what pills you take and you have a secure location so you always have it on you, especially when you have the mobile app. The, the sky's the limit for this particular stuff. And of course you can view it nice and clean. I'll go back. And this is just a no, no folder area. Next to my vault is the generator. That's where you generate passwords. You can regenerate 
particular options at the bottom. You got your length, capital, lowercase, numbers, and social characters. Checking it will have it in the password. Unchecking it will not have it. You can also choose to have a passphrase instead. The reason why you would want to use a passphrase over a password is in case you ever have to type it in. It's a lot easier to type in words than it is to type in these random symbols and characters. It's looking at you, Netflix, uh, where they make you still type in or enter your password in with their TV remote, which is crazy, but this is, it happens. There's several websites like that, and it's easier to type in. I like to do email passwords the same way, just in case uh, you need to type it in. Maybe you're not at home or you need to get into your email account from somewhere else. It's easier to type in words than it is to type in letters. You can choose the, how many you want. You can have a, include a number. You can have it capitalized. I always like to include a number and it throws a number in in a random spot. And it's a random number. Pretty helpful. And the password is just your catch all for everything else. In your account, you never have to type in a, a password. You want to use random numbers and symbols and all that. The longer the password, the better. Uh, remember, uh, uniqueness is the most important factor when it comes to online accounts. So never reuse passwords. Let the password manager generate them for you and let them fill it in for you. And along with that, while we're here, write down your master password. Because if you forget it, there is no resetting it. So it's important you never forget your master password. Then you can also choose the minimum numbers, minimum special, and avoid ambiguous characters. That means to avoid O's and zeros because they look the same. Just in case the off chance you have to type in, you don't have to ask yourself, is that an O or is that a zero? You know it's an O. And you also have next to the generator is the settings. You can manage your folders. You can sync the data, lock options. I would avoid using never. I'm just using never for demonstration purposes right now. Uh, but you want to do at least on browser restart. This means you have to enter your master password to log in. If you have a long master password, you can also use unlock with pin. Link down below in the description on how to do that. Just keep in mind, a pin is not a replacement for the master password. It's just a convenient factor. That's all it is. So you will, uh, if you remove this extension or log out, you will need your master password to log in or you need to log in somewhere else. The pin is not replacing it. You need your master password to log in. The pin is also localized to the machine it's on right now. So you can have a pin for your different devices. Your pin can be uh, a number, letter, social characters, it can be anything. It's just a convenience factor. You can unlock the account now. That means you will need your master password to unlock the account. Two-step uh, login is what you use for uh, using Google, Authenti uh, Google Authenticator or Authy. You need to enter a second password that changes every 30 seconds. Gives your account a little bit more security. Uh, if you're new to password managers, it's a little bit more of an advanced step, but it's nice to have in the future. I say right now, get used to the password manager and use a master password that is over 15 characters long and you'll be fine. And maybe a couple months later, think about getting to step login. You can upgrade to a premium membership, gives you more features, pretty great price. Um, and you can also change your master password from here. Fingerprint phrase is what you use for if you're sharing your accounts just to make sure you are the right person, you're syncing properly and, and, and the connections encrypted and everything's secure it's not to be confused with a secret key it is not a secret key a secret key is used for encrypting data but warden does not use a secret key the fingerprint phrase is merely for sharing passwords in a uh, uh, in the sharing vault section you also log out you have your tools to import passwords from other password managers you can export i'll show you that and how to back up bit warning link in the description down below you can share a vault that is where that fingerprint phrase will come in if you need to make sure you're sharing with the correct person there's not anybody in a man in the middle attack um, you give them a call say hey, here's my fingerprint phrase okay it matches we're secure everything's encrypted properly and again fingerprint phrase and share your vault is just for when you have to share passwords with the collection uh, if you're sharing with your wife or business this that's only time you have to worry about that. Uh, you can go into your actual web vault. You have more control and options there. You have more options underneath here. You can enable autofill and page load. 
it's a nice feature still in the page loads and it detects that there's a password and email or username section and automatically fill it in. It's a nice thing to have, but it's can be seen, uh, it can be seen as a security vulnerability. Don't use it unless you really need to use it. I'll just leave it blank like that. All these other features are fine, except for a clear clipboard. That would probably go at least 30 seconds. It's nice to have. So if you copy the password, it will clear that out after 30 seconds. And all the other features you can leave like it is. And you also have your theme setting. You can choose a different theme, whatever suits your needs. And that is the general overview of Bitwarden and how to use it. Thank you.